This is the uh, video to accompany lesson 7.3 on the quadratic formula and our objective today is to be able to solve a quadratic by using the quadratic formula. In lesson 7.0 to 7.2 we've been doing this by factoring so we're going to use a different method today. Now the reason we're going to be using this different method is not every question can be factored, particularly not when we don't necessarily have nice whole numbers to work with. So. We're going to be practicing this today with nice numbers that we could easily factor with, but on the following lesson, 7.4, we'll be looking at much more difficult questions. Now, we actually started up with a warm-up that went with this, which was just to do with substitution. Now, the reason for this question is to remind students that when they substitute, they shouldn't just be putting this. What they should be doing is they should be putting the numbers in parentheses as they're substituting. Of course, when you have things like two negatives here, you can make this into a positive. And 9 squared is 81, plus 2 is 83. Now, really, question 2 is the key question. When we square a negative number, if you just type in negative 2 squared, you're going to get negative 4. When really the answer is supposed to be negative 2 all squared, which is positive 4, plus 9, which gives us 13. So if you check the difference between adding parentheses and not adding parentheses, you get a different answer. So it's important when you substitute, you should really be substituting with parentheses. If it's something that's positive, it's probably not going to make a big difference, but certainly when you're squaring a negative, it will make a big difference. We also did a quick recap on some of the factoring methods that we've been looking at. So when terms end in a variable, we're going to want to do our little lists here. Find things that are common to both, an x, and then things that we didn't circle can go in here. And then as we're doing our opposites for this one, when it's just an x term, we put 0. And when it's something like minus 3, we put positive 3. And if the question gets a little bit longer, we can have a few more terms. 6 is 2 times 3. 8 is 3 twos times together. I have two terms here circled 2x. I did not have 3x circled, and I did not have 2 times 2 circled either. And then from here, the opposites are going to be 0. Instead of negative 4, positive 4. And instead of times in by 3, divide by 3. So they're the ones that still some students are struggling on, so we spent a little bit longer going over that. To return to our objective, quadratic formula, there's going to be six main steps that we're going to follow when we want to do these questions. So we're going to want to make sure the questions of the form equal to zero, which is important, and that's what we did last lesson. And if it's not equal to zero, you're going to make it equal to zero. We're right, going to write down a, b, and c, the number of x squareds, the number of x's, and the last number. We're going to write down the quadratic formula. Now that's given to you on the formula sheet. You don't need to memorize this formula, but you do need to know how to use it. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. And notice it contains the letters a, b, and c, which is what we got from here. And we're going to get from our original question. We're going to substitute into the quadratic formula, which is why we have the warm up there to practice substitution. We're going to simplify until we have something that looks like this. Basically one term plus or minus a second term divided by something on the bottom. And then once we've got there, we're going to split this into two questions. This plus or minus means we work out the question with a plus, and we also work out the question with a minus. Remember, the reason we get two answers is basically it's from this power here. So when we have questions like cubes, which you get to in Algebra 2, you'll probably end up with three answers. Eventually you'll learn that it's at most three answers, and it's at most two answers, but for right now we'll stick with the fact that it's two answers. So let's have a look at a question, and let's see how it works following those steps. So if this is the question, first of all we want to make sure it's equal to zero. That's a good start. We want to write down what a, b, and c are. So a is the number of x squares, so in this case one. b is the number of x's. Make sure you look at the sign as well, so negative two and c is the number at the end, which is negative eight. The step that a lot of people want to cut out is this writing down the quadratic formula, because they want to say, hey, look, it's here, I can just substitute. I would be very careful about doing that. A lot of students that do that tend to make lots of careless mistakes. So I would write down the question each time. You're then going to substitute the numbers in, and like the warm-up, notice when I'm substituting for b, I'm putting it in parentheses. So b is negative two, I'm putting it in parentheses. a is one, I'm putting it in parentheses and I substitute for each of the letters that you see on that formula. From there, I'm just going to start using my calculator. So if I'm checking this part here, as long as I type it in exactly like it looks on the calculator, then I should be okay. So menu, going to run. So 
I'm going to be typing in, I'm ignoring the square root button for right now. So negative 2 squared minus 4, parentheses 1, parentheses 8, oops, sorry, parentheses negative 8. And it is important that you check carefully as you're typing these questions in. And I get 36. Now, if I want to do the square root of 36, then I can get 6. And for today's lesson, this should always be a perfect square. So you will be able to work this out with no remainder or anything like that. And the next lesson will have slightly more complicated numbers. So this is where I got my 6 from. The two negatives here at the start I combined into a positive. So the negative of negative 2 is positive 2. And 2 times 1 is just 2. And notice it looks like this form. Something plus or minus something divided by something. And then on the last one, we just want to split it into two separate questions. I want to work it out with the plus, and I want to work it out with the minus. 2 add 6 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. 2 minus 6 is negative 4, divided by 2 gives you negative 2. So it's another way of finding out a solution to an equation. And we can check this, of course, because we've actually been doing factoring as well. In theory, the question we just answered, we would not use quadratic formula for. It'd be much easier to factor. Think of the two numbers that times to make 8 and subtract to make 2. And very quickly you should find, even if you choose 8 and 1, you should find 4 and 2, which would give you 2. So, x minus 4, x plus 2. And then when we do the opposites, we get positive 4 and negative 2, which you can indeed see are exactly the same. Now, importantly for this unit though, the very first step is going to be super important. If we can't make this in the form A, B, C, then we can't figure out what those are, then we're going to have a problem. So just to remember, A, B, and C refer to how many x squareds we have, how many x's, and then what's the number on the end, providing it's equal to zero. So if we look at some of the other answers then, x squared, remember, means 1x squared, negative 3x, positive 8. Now, as we go down to this one, notice what I didn't say. I didn't say it's the first number, the second number, and the third number. It said it's the number of x squared, so negative 2, the number of x's, and then the last number. So we have to pay attention a little bit to that. As we get to question 4, if it doesn't equal 0, like last lesson, you want to make it equal 0 by moving it to the side by doing the inverse. So 3x take away 3x is 0. 2 take away 3x is negative 1x. And then I've still got my plus 3. So on this question, a would equal 5, b would equal negative 1 and c would equal 3. And for the adventurous amongst you, you might want to try doing FOIL on this, multiplying it out, bringing the 4 across to the side so it does equal 0, and you could check in the end. You should end up with a is 1, b is negative 3, and c is negative 14. So being able to pick out a, b, and c is really important. Numbers 1 and 2 are how most questions are actually going to look, though. So if we try one more question following those steps, this time, I'll make it one which you would have used slide and glide for if you were doing your uh, factoring method. So, a is 2, b is negative 5, and c is, whoops, 2. So, write down a, b, and c. Write out the quadratic formula, so we're just copying that. Remember, we don't need to memorize it. And then we're substituting. Wherever we see b, we're putting negative 5. Don't forget the negative at the start. That's different from that negative there. As I'm substituting, I am putting it in parentheses. Notice a and c are the same number. That's why I got 2 and 2 here. And on the bottom here, 2a, where a is 2. Some people thought that the denominator was always 2, often because a is 1. So be careful while you're plugging that in to make sure you do get the correct denominator. If we type all that into the calculator, so I'm looking on the square root part. I'm kind of doing my uh, gemdas at this point, or my pemdas. So I got negative 5 squared minus 4, parentheses 2, parentheses 2. And I got 9. And of course, the square root of 9 is 3. And if you're not sure, you can just type it in as well just to check. Two negatives again make a positive. So I got positive 5. And 2 times 2 equals 4. And then for that very last stage, split it up into two questions. Do one with the positive and do one with the negative. So 5 out of 3 is 8. Divided by 4 is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2, divided by 4. Notice that I didn't use the divide button, I used a fraction. And then you can simplify that fraction. And if you want to check those answers, we could do this by factoring. If I slide the 2 to the end and multiply, I get 4. Quickly, you'd find two numbers that times make 4 would be 4 and 1. Of course, we're not finished at this step. 
As we times by 2, we now need to divide by 2. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. 1 half does not simplify, so you slide the number to the front. And then as we're doing our last stage here, the opposite of 2, sorry, the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. The opposite of uh, negative 1 would be positive 1. And then divide by 2 would give me 1 half. And I just realised up here, which I hadn't noticed before, 5 take away 3 is a positive 2, of course, which would give me positive 1 half. And another good reason wanted to check your answer, just to make sure. So the opposite of negative 1 is positive 1, and then divide by 2. So just watch out for little careless mistakes like that that can easily crop up as you're doing that. When you're trying your questions, you should do a similar thing. You should do the quadratic formula first, and then afterwards you can check using factoring. And those will be the five questions that you would do for lesson 7.3. Thank you.